Hey guys, so in this one we're going to do a short video on how I do mass airflow sensor tuning. Um, so this is actually on my personal truck. Um, don't mind the channels list, it's all kind of spread out. I was having some issues with having to go back and um, download the stable version as opposed to the uh, um, um, beta version. So I was kind of having some issues there. Let's see if I can load a charts layout that is a little less convoluted um, let's see if this works and yeah, it's got most of it in there um, I've been doing some transmission tuning so that's probably why you see some of that so this is the file out of my truck um, and so if we pull the file up uh, we'll go to this one uh, because this was um, the one it was on when I did the math tuning um, so this does have to be in mass airflow only. So under airflow dynamic, you have to put the higher RPM disabled to something low, like four or 300, as opposed to the OEM, which is 4,000. The spot where it's supposed to transfer over to the mass airflow sensor from speed density. Um, but of course any transient throttle is going to, going to do that. And then the table we're going to be looking at is just this airflow versus frequency table. This is what it looks like right now. Um, so I do have a D D cell fuel cutoff on and power enrichment um, is relatively low, but I don't believe that I got anywhere near it, um, you know, in here. And even if I did, um, you can see where it goes to zero and um, let's see if I'm even logging the fuel system status. Let's see somewhere like over here. Yeah, you can see here it's an open loop. So that's technically a full throttle move. Um, let me get rid of one of these since we're not doing transmission stuff. Um, yeah, that'll kind of work. Um, so this is what it looks like. Um, now, granted, this is pretty well, uh, you can see there's no um, knock retard or anything. Um, this is, you also want to make sure that your axes are the same. Um, so if we go over here to our file, we right click and we go to column axes, copy labels. Um, even if you've had different labels in here, it's okay. As long as you're logging the PID, you'll be fine. You just have to go over here and go to Hertz uh, under the column axes and just uh, delete what's there. I've been doing some Gen 4 and 5 stuff. That's why it's different. Um, and then we'll just hit paste and then it'll populate the data per hours. And then it looks like the graph, one decimal. So if required zero, that's that's okay. You can set it to one or two, it's really up to you. Um, this is kind of where we're at. Um, so most would say that this is pretty dialed in. You can see this is about a 12 minute, 13 minute drive. Um, it's kind of all over the place, just you know, driving around town, um, nothing super crazy. And there again, this is kind of the average of where we were at. Um, so with something like this, it would be perfectly fine. I, I, the mass airflow table, I really don't think that you have to go in and pick a point and do one and a half percent or 2% or 1% or a half percent or you know anything like that. So what you can do here um, is you can just highlight the whole deal, copy it. And this is literally what I did the other day. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go pay. I'm gonna go ahead and actually go. I'm actually gonna go. I don't want to overshoot anything. So what I'm actually gonna do is a pay special half. Okay. Now you're probably looking at this and going, it changed nothing. Well, potentially not. Um, you know, most will tell you that if you're within three, you know, three or five percent, meaning that these numbers up here are like a 3.5 or negative five or negative five and a half or plus 2.2 or you know whatever it is that that's going to be well in the range and you're probably right honestly um you know if it's your own vehicle you can kind of go a little over overly excessive with it um this is pretty dialed in i'm pretty sure the next run it looked almost the same maybe a couple of these had flip flop there again you're just you're kind of trading ticks at that point but if these numbers were big, like if you were seeing plus, you know, or minus 10s, 12s, or even 15s, which sometimes you will, you would be able to audibly and physically hear and feel the, the vehicle 
laying over, not behaving right. Just you would see your um, your oxygen sensors, you know, just all the way on the floor. Um, the O2 voltage bank one and bank two, um, you know, if it was lean or, you know, in the high 900s if it was rich. So just keep that in mind. But if you do this over and over and over with it in math mode, you're going to be just fine. And the speed density curve would be the same thing. Um, it would just be a matter of plotting the data here. And so it would take a little bit longer to do it, but it, it could be done just fine. Um, you know, if you're a Gen 4, Gen 5, a lot of folks, myself included, will do it, um, you know, uh, in tandem. You can do that with the Gen 3s, not so much. I haven't really had any success doing that. This way works just fine. You just have to take some time to do it.